After disappearing from the limelight for a while, fans everywhere are super excited to see Brendan Fraser commanding the big screen again, which is making for quite the moving comeback story. The beloved American Canadian actor is impressing audiences all over with his performance in Darren Aronofsky's The Whale, a film about a gay obese recluse trying to reconnect with his estranged daughter and heal his deep-seated traumas. Not only did Brendan receive a six-minute standing ovation at the 2022 Venice Film Festival, he was once again showered with love and praise. After its screening, at the Toronto International Film Festival, to which he expressed a ton of gratitude and presented an emotional speech. Despite Brendan's work in this film proving to be Oscar-worthy, say the least, it's well-deserved after a decade of low-profile roles for the actor and personal issues, including multiple injuries and surgeries, from his back to his vocal cords. However, there truly is a lot to know about Brendan Fraser's earlier years and rise to fame, as well as the setbacks he's more recently faced, all of which make his comeback to the big screen even more exciting. So stay tuned because we're going to get into all of that and more here for you on The Famous Life. Brendan James Fraser was born on December 3, 1968 in Indianapolis, Indiana to Canadian parents, mother Carol Mary and Peter Fraser. He was the youngest of four boys and his brothers are named Kevin, Reagan and Sean. While he was growing up, Brendan's mom worked as a sales counselor while his dad was a former journalist, working as a Canadian Foreign Service officer for the Government Office of Tourism. His maternal uncle, George Jean Roux, was the only Canadian to win a gold medal at the 1952 Summer Olympics. Not only does Brendan have French-Canadian ancestry, he also has Irish, Scottish, and German in his background. Brendan is a dual American and Canadian citizen, and during his childhood, he and his family moved around a lot. He lived in Eureka, California, Seattle, Washington, Ottawa, Ontario, and even the Netherlands and Switzerland. Brendan attended Upper Canada College for his secondary schooling, a private boarding school in Toronto, which was a very elite place. While he was in London on a trip, he went to his first professional theater show, which Brendan said kickstarted his interest in acting. This early exposure to the theater arts would lead him to Seattle's Cornish College of the Arts and graduated from there in 1990. Brendan started to act at a small college focused on acting in New York City and planned on working towards a Master of Fine Arts in Acting from Southern Methodist University. However, plans changed, and once Brendan stopped in Hollywood along the way, he decided to stay there and try work in film. In 1991, Brendan would make his on-screen debut in a minor role playing Sailor No. 1, or Marine, who was handed to Vietnam in River Phoenix's Dogfight. And then, he landed some slightly bigger roles in the 1992 comedy Encino Man, where he played a frozen prehistoric caveman who was thought out in the present. And that same year, he further starred alongside Matt Damon in the movie School Ties. In 1994, Brendan played Steve Nebraska in The Scout, as well as the character of Montgomery Monty Kessler with the honors. Another role he landed that same year was in Airheads with Adam Sandler and Steve Buscemi, but sadly, all three of those films were box office flops. Some other roles came for Brandon following those roles, but they didn't do well either or were just small parts in All Things Considered. He had about five more years of supporting work before he would have a big break. In 1997, the actor would land his first major box office success with George of the Jungle. Brandon had the title role of the movie, which was based on the animated series of the same name. The role of George was perfect for Brendan as it fully embraced his charm and beefy good looks, as well as providing him with the chance to show off his comedic talent. Brendan claims that this role was the one that dramatically changed his career path. Brendan's biggest commercial success and what he probably came to be best known for was his role of Rick in the adventure film trilogy The Mummy, which saw its first installment released in 1999 and the sequel The Mummy Returns in 2001. In between those hits, Brendan starred in some other movies that didn't do so hot at the box office, including Monkey Bone and the rom-com Blast from the Past. In 2000, he was also in the fantasy comedy Bedazzle, which was a remake of the British film from the 1960s of the same name. In 2004, Brendan was also a part of the ensemble cast in the Academy Award-winning film Crash. In 1998, Brendan received critical acclaim for his dramatic role in the movie Gods and Monsters, which was based on the life of James Whale, played by Ian McKellen, and it follows the loss of creativity, ambiguous sexuality, and the bond between heterosexual Gardner, who was played by Brendan, and a gay, tortured unwell filmmaker by Ian. This role pointed to another dimension of Brendan's dramatic persona and his versatility in acting. At the height of his fame, Brendan was dabbling in more than just movie work too. He had a reoccurring role on the series Scrubs from 2002 to 2004 and voiced the characters of the Fairly Odd Parents and on The Simpsons. He also starred in the West End production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof as Brick in 2001, closing in 2002 and earning Brendan many excellent reviews. Later on, after a 
six year hiatus, The Mummy films returned in 2008 with The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Empire for its third installment, for which Frazier also returned for his role. The Mummy trilogy was such a hit that it has its own roller coaster at Universal Studios based on the movies in their Hollywood and Florida parks. Despite Brennan returning for his role in The Mummy in the mid 2000s, or gradually, the actor took a hiatus from the big screen, which had many of us wondering what had happened to him. And according to Brendan, his break from the spotlight was due to a few different factors. In a 2018 interview with GQ, he opened up a lot about his fading career at that time and the complicated reasons why it happened. First off, Brendan's focus shifted to prioritizing his health and well-being because he was plagued by injuries from doing so much stunt work. The star had shared that filming The Mummy had took a destructive toll on his body. He said, by the time I did the third mummy picture in China, I was put together with tape and ice, just like really nerdy and fetishy about ice packs, screw cap ice packs and downhill mountain biking pads, because they're small and light and they can fit under your clothes. I was building an exoskeleton for myself daily. He had to undergo a handful of surgeries, including a laminectomy, work on his lumbar that had to be done twice, a partial knee replacement, and even work to repair his vocal cords, all within a mere seven years. In 2016, Brendan's mother also passed away, and a handful of years before this, he divorced his longtime wife, Afton Smith, but everything in and around this period affected him and changed his life. Brendan said that through a 10-year period, he changed houses, I went through a divorce, some kids were born, I mean, they were born, but they were growing up. I was going through things that mold and shape you in ways that you're not ready for until you go through them. While those things may not be major causes, it was certainly a reason why Brendan moved from Hollywood to New York State, which is where he currently still lives to be closer to his children and ex-wife as well. Furthermore, Brendan talked about an incident that went down in 2003 at a luncheon held by Hollywood Foreign Press Association in the Beverly Hills Hotel, involving Philip Burke, former president of the association. Frazier describes the assault. His left hand reaches around, grabs my ass cheek, and one of his fingers touches me in the taint. He starts moving it around. This is an incident that the perpetrator denies, but this incident in and of itself affected Brendan deeply, and he says that afterwards he became depressed and reclusive for quite some time. While he supports and admires the women who came forward during the Time's Up movement, Razor admitted he previously lacked the courage to do so himself. Other things that affected Brendan including losing out on the role of Superman in Superman Returns, which he explained made him feel like he didn't measure up, he said he ultimately disappeared because he bought into the pressure that comes with the hopes and aims that come with a professional life that's being molded and shaped and guided and managed, and added that requires what they call thick skin, or just ignoring it, putting your head in the sand, or gnashing your teeth and putting on your public face, or just not even needing the public, ignoring. He's staying home, damn it. You know, not because I'm aloof or anything, but because I just felt I couldn't be a part of it. I didn't feel that I belonged. Though Brendan wouldn't appear in any major on-screen productions during that time, he still had some roles on the go. This included the 2015 miniseries Texas Rising on the History Channel, as well as a reoccurring role on the drama series The Affair in season three. Other roles that Brendan more recently acted in were in the FX series Trust in 2018, portraying Clifford slash Robot Man in the Titan series TV as well. Brendan is also reprising the character in the spinoff Doom Patrol, voicing the character and appearing in the flashbacks. In January of 2021, Brendan was announced as the lead role in Darren Aronofsky's film The Whale, which premiered at the Venice International Film Festival in September of 2022. His performance was praised and it even received a six minute standing ovation, a positive reaction Action, which reportedly brought Brendan himself to tears. All of this touching news, as well as Brendan's upcoming film work, has led to the internet and many publications referring to his comeback as the Renaissance. Fans are overjoyed to see that the beloved actor seems to be back to Hollywood's blockbusters. Brendan has also opened up about his performance in The Whale. He plays Charlie, a 600 pound homosexual man who's also a recluse, trying to reconnect with his estranged daughter and abandoned by his lover. For the role, Brendan had also donned a massive, uncomfortable prosthetic fat suit. The suit added an extra 50 to 300 pounds, and Brendan said that he felt a sense of vertigo when he would take it off after filming. He explained, I developed muscles I did not know I had. I even felt a sense of vertigo at the end of the day when all the appliances were removed. It felt like stepping off the dock onto a boat in Venice. It gave me appreciation for those whose bodies are similar. You need to be incredibly strong of a person, mentally and physically, to inhabit that physical being. He also added how uncomfortable it was. The torso piece was almost like a straitjacket, with sleeves that went on, airbrushed by hand, to look as identical as it would to human skin, right down to the hand-punched hair. 
After Brendan's well-received premiere, social media was flooded with videos of his big moment. Fans and other stars were expressing their pride for Brendan. Even his friend Dwayne The Rock Johnson wrote on Twitter saying, Man, this makes me so happy to see this beautiful ovation for Brendan. He supported me coming into his Mummy Returns franchise for my first ever role, which kicked off my Hollywood career. Rooting for all your success, brother, and congrats to my bud Darren Aronofsky. And for what's next for Brendan's comeback, he's been announced as part of the cast for Martin Scorsese's upcoming film, Pillars of the Flower Moon, alongside Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio, and more. He's also been added to the cast of upcoming comedy film Brothers, which also stars Josh Brolin and Peter Dinklage. And Brendan joined the cast of DC Comics film Batgirl as the supervillain Firefly, which was said to have finished shooting in March of 2022. Well, I think it's safe to say that we're all here for Brendan Fraser's comeback, and if anyone deserves grace for the big screen again, it's totally him. Thank you everybody for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Famous Life and leave a comment for who you'd like to see us feature next.